Hey guys, uh, I'm Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple. Welcome to our Instagram Live. We have these lives a few days a week. Usually I think these days it's about three times a week where I come on and answer all of your sleep questions, babies, toddlers, preschoolers, whatever it is, bring it on. Um, and sometimes we have themes. So um, this week, we're gonna talk about several different things, but I'll just say that today's social media post is about transitioning out of co-sleeping for toddlers who are gonna to go to a toddler bed. Last week on Thursday, we talked about babies transitioning out of co-sleeping into the crib. So if you have a baby, so 18 months and younger for sure, and you know that they need to go into a crib uh, from your bed, then check out last Thursday's post. You can also go to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com, baby sleep made simple. And uh, I was trying to think if I had a link to it, but I don't think I do. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can see the whole Q&A we had last Thursday talking about babies transitioning out of co-sleeping into the crib. A lot of the advice is similar, but a lot of it's different when you're talking about a toddler going to a toddler bed. We have to, have to talk a lot more about communication. Um, we have to talk about like discipline and behavior and all that cool stuff. Um, whereas babies, we don't. So if you have a baby, check that out. But today we're gonna be talking about how to get your little one out of your bed and into their own bed, whether it's a toddler crib or a toddler bed, a twin bed, a queen bed, doesn't really matter. It's just a bed without boundaries. So um, you can check out today's post because I list the um, steps to take. This is for like a gradual transition. It's seven steps for a gradual transition. I mean, of course, you can cold turkey it and do it all at once, but if you don't wanna do that, then these are the steps. And usually if you're co-sleeping with a toddler, You've probably been co-sleeping for quite a while and most parents want a more gradual transition. But anyway, that's what today's post is about. Uh, we're gonna also this week talk about weaning off the pacifier. Should you do it? How should you do it? When to do it? All that good stuff. Um, if you are the parent of a toddler or a preschooler, so basically a, let's say 15 month old all the way through to like four years old, one of my stories I just put up today was like, let me know what you're struggling with because I am creating my toddler program and I wanna know exactly what you need help with. So in regards to sleep, what are you struggling with the most? most? <laughs> they still have that chocolate on my tongue. So you can just let me know here. You can just say like, oh, for your toddler program, here's what I'm struggling with. And let me just let me have it. Or you can DM me or you can reply to my story is probably the best place because it'll all be in one spot. Um, but let me know what you're struggling with. Um, okay, so we'll answer co-sleeping questions. I'll try to get through your toddler co-sleeping questions. Um, and then we'll do some general baby sleep questions. So I'm just gonna quickly go over. I don't have a graphic to share anything. Um, I didn't do a fancy graphic today, forgive me. Um, I need to redo my six-year-old manicure. But the six steps that you can use to gradually get your toddler, so your, let's say, 18 month old, two year old, three year old and older, um, transitioning out of co-sleeping in your bed and into their own bed and in their own room. So the first thing you have to do is you have to plan it. Um, if you have an older child that is in the bed with you, the best thing you can do is utilize communication because they understand so much. Toddlers do not like to have things sprung on them, especially if you're springing on them a change in their typical routines or habits. They just don't handle it well. And they certainly don't handle it at bedtime if you suddenly say, that's it, you're gonna be sleeping in your own bed. So you have to plan it. You have to make sure the timing is right. You don't want big transitions to happen together. So you don't wanna be, you don't wanna tell your toddler, oh, you're gonna sleep in your own bed in your own room when little baby sister comes because then they will associate babies just to coming with them getting kicked out. You probably don't wanna combine it with potty training as well, because that's a big milestone they go through. Um, starting a new school or daycare or preschool. Um, a parent going back to work, for instance. So some of these don't apply with a lot of us being stuck at home, but if you know it looks like when you're going to return back to work, I probably wouldn't combine that transition with them going to their own bed. So for a lot of us who are stuck at home, and if you're working from home, so you're not working outside of the home, um, your little one's probably not going to daycare or preschool, now could be a good time if you're not having other big transitions planned. If you have a new sibling arriving, I would recommend you really space it out as long as possible, at least four weeks, um, ideally, so they don't associate the two happening. Um, the second step is to communicate. So basically what this means is you have got to hype it up. You've got to sell the dream <laughs> of your toddler's bedroom and of their own bed, and you come up with whatever motivates and inspires your toddler the best, but hype it up for sure. Let them know how proud you are, let them know how excited and amazing it is they get their own big boy bed in their own room 
You can remind them of their big cousin or, or siblings or friends that sleep in their own bedroom and in their own bed. So you get to be a big kid like them. You get to join their club. You want to hype, hype, hype it up. And you want to plan this, you know, at least a week in advance, maybe even a little more depending on your little one's adaptability and just really sell the dream to them. Again, so that that's not sprung upon them, but also to give them time even if they seem resistant or they just have nothing to say about it, it just gives their brain time to process it. Um, talk about all the people that they know who sleep in their own bedrooms and their own beds as well, especially older cousins and friends that they look up to. Um, the third thing you wanna do is set the scene. So you need to transform their bedroom or what will be their bedroom into a fun, happy place. So you wanna spend time there during the day, playing together, laughing, cuddling, making great memories. You want it to be a fun, happy room. You can read books in there, in their new toddler bed. You can sit there together and read books. You can play games. You can help them set up their bed. Um, if you don't have one picked out, they can help you pick one out, um, or at least they can help pick out the sheets, or at the very least, they can pick out the stuffed animals, the one or two that they're going to sleep with. Give them some uh, choices in the matter, in addition to hyping it up. You can also find really affordable um, stickers for the wall. They have these all over the internet and they're really affordable and they can create their own scene. They can have koala, they can have rainforest, they can have cars, dinosaurs, frozen, whatever you want. And then they get to decorate their own bedroom however they want. And these stickers come off. It's not like painting their bedroom. It's not a big investment. Um, so definitely involve them in the process and just sell them the dream. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to start moving the bedtime routine into their room. So the space is already been set up. You sold them the dream. They know it's going to happen soon. You're like, not quite yet. We're going to start on Thursday, but today's Monday. So after their bath, you're going to take them into their new bedroom and you can do their bedtime routine. So you can do massage, put their pajamas on, read book, have a feed, whatever it is. And then when it's time to go to sleep, if they're used to falling asleep in your bed, then take them to your bed and they can fall asleep as per normal. But what you're doing is you're very subtly introducing a new sleep space, but you're not gonna get huge meltdowns right away. It's like you're taking half the process and putting it in their new bedroom. So now they're gonna associate their bedroom with the bedtime routine. You can do it for a few days, you can do it for longer, depending on how well you think your little one will adapt. And then they can fall asleep in your bed. Um, how long you do it depends on you, but I do recommend se separating this out because it helps them get used to it. It's not like all at once everything happens in their bedroom. Um, step five is to, I'm just looking at the post myself, guys. Um, step five is to, yeah, get the, I couldn't remember if this is five or six. Step five is now it's time for them to fall asleep and sleep in their bed. So you're gonna do their bedtime routine in their bedroom. Your bedroom is basically now off the menu. And after their bedtime routine, rather than saying, that's it, go to bed and you leaving the room, you're going to camp out in their bedroom for a few nights. So you're going to hang out while they fall asleep at bedtime. You may even need to spend the whole night there, depending on if you want to for your own um, reassurance, which a lot of parents do, depending on if they wake often and they need you throughout the night, you can decide. But for sure, you're going to camp out at bedtime. You're going to sit right next to their bed, sing to them, pat them, stroke them, all that good stuff to help them get used to falling asleep in a new space. So for sure do this for a few nights, especially at bedtime, you can camp out there the whole night, but not in their bed. So you're not co-sleeping in, in their new bedroom. You're camping out on the floor, on a mattress or wherever, but you're in there, but you're in a different sleep space. So they have a new room, they have a new bed. They're not sleeping with you, but you're still there to provide reassurance. And this, I mean, some parents may go, wow, why not just do the whole shebang? And you can. But if your little one's really slow to adapt or fights change, this is a really nice step because you're still there reassuring them as much as they need um, and they're really comforted by this. So you're gonna do this depending again on your little one's adaptability. But I recommend you don't just start sleeping in their bedroom indefinitely. Try to limit it like one week max or maybe just two to three nights. At this point, you're gonna be on step six, which is weaning yourself out of the room. This is kind of where the sleep training happens. So this is where you devise a step-by-step -step plan. How am I gonna go from sitting next to their bedside, stroking them and singing to them, um, to slowly weaning off my support and getting them used to falling asleep in their bed on their own and sleeping through the night. As you know, there are many ways to accomplish this. If you want an example method, then you can click the link in my bio here on Instagram and you'll see um, I put a link there, it's the second or third one, and it's basically how to keep your toddler in their bed all night video. So it's a video on my YouTube channel that walks you through an example method to get your toddler falling asleep in their bed and staying there all night, so check that out. Um, and the last step, of course, is to stay consistent. 
because consistency is your best friend when dealing with anything parenting related. But if we occasionally give in, if we provide intermittent reinforcement, all it does is confuse our little ones and all it does is make them fight, 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 change. It makes us fight with them. It just drags everything out. Um, so once you've decided to make the transition, you can go as slowly as you want following these seven steps. And the last step is to stay consistent as with any form of sleep training, as with any form of really anything parenting, we have to stay consistent to let our little ones know this is the new routine. This is the way it's going to be. If you have a rough night, I'm here for you. I can sit next to your bed. I can camp out in your bedroom if you're really sick, but I highly recommend that parents take their bedroom off the menu for good. And if your little one is ever struggling, then you go to them in their sleep space. So it's fewer changes. Um, okay, that's the basics. You can check out my um, post. Facebook post has a little more detail because they let me write more words. Instagram doesn't, so you can hop over there. Or if you're on my email list, I sent a much longer email. If you want to get on my email list, um, you can just DM me and say, I want to get on your email list and give me your email address and I'll hop you on. Because I also email every day, but it's got a lot more details um, than, for instance, like the Instagram post. Okay, so I'm going to take your questions now. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see how we are going. Courtney is first. Hey, Courtney. Um, Courtney says, what age is best to transition to a toddler bed? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to turn this into like an article on my website, which is going to have a lot more detail on the when, how, who, where, and why. Just like splashed water all over myself. Um, that's a great question. So in general, do not, do not, do not ever take your little one out of the crib until they are climbing out repeatedly, despite you telling them not to, and it's an obvious safety risk. This should not happen before age two and a half years, if possible. There are some like 24 month olds, or God forbid, like 20 month olds, but sometimes there's like a 24 month old who can climb out of their crib and repeatedly does it despite their parents, like begging, pleading, and disciplining. If that's the case for you, you can make like modifications. A lot of cribs have uneven sides. So if you look at your crib, maybe you never realized it has uneven sides, turn it so the shorter side is against the wall. Have a look in your toddler's crib. Are they using anything that they can get a leg up to climb out? Remove everything. You know, they're, they're two years old now. Maybe they have some stuffed animals. Maybe they're bottling them and stepping on them. But do your best. If you can wait as long as possible, like two and a half years minimum, but ideally closer to three, your little one has the cognitive maturity and the impulse control to be able to stay in a toddler bed with no boundaries. An 18 month old just does not have it. And so we can't put those expectations on them because they just can't comply. They don't understand to stay in their bed. So do not transition your toddler out of a crib just because a new sibling is coming, get another crib. You can find affordable cribs at Ikea or on Amazon, like usually like a hundred bucks. And it could buy you, depending on your toddler's age, another year or even year and a half or two years of peaceful sleep. That's a huge transition to go through is to toddler bed in addition to having a sibling. So definitely get another crib. Also, your newborn baby can sleep in a bassinet till like three, four months, maybe even a little bit longer, maybe five, and that could buy you some more time. So don't transition because a new sibling's coming. Don't transition because you think, oh, they're two now. Isn't it cute? We should transition them to a toddler bed. No way. The only time to do it is if they are repeatedly climbing out and it's a safety risk, or they're getting close to three years old and they're asking for it, or you just feel like they could handle it. So that's my advice, Courtney. <laughs> I do have a guide on my website called um, How to Transition Your Toddler from the Crib to the Bed, so you can check that out too if you want more details. Courtney, also when I move, there will only be two bedrooms for two kids and two adults. Which child should be with the parents? It depends on their age. I'm sorry, I forget your little one's age. We did talk about this last week. We talked about siblings sharing um, a bedroom. So if you still have a baby uh, that is feeding in the night, then I would keep the baby with you because they're feeding in the night anyway and you don't want them to disrupt the toddler or the oldest sibling. I also don't recommend putting a young toddler in a bedroom with a baby unsupervised just because you know, you're... 20 month old or 24 month old may think they're helping by putting a blanket in baby's bed or giving baby toys to play with. So you don't want that. You really don't want your older child sharing until they're able to understand like basic safety rules. So usually age three or older, depends on your little one. Um, if you want to give me the specific ages, I can give you some advice, Courtney, but also you can check out last week's post because we talk about these specifics when to share, uh, when siblings can share a 
bedroom. Courtney says they're both sleeping through the night. So that's another criteria is you want your baby to be sleeping through the night and not having any night feeds. So I would say if you have a baby, then it really depends on the older one's age and if they are able to understand basic safety and to not mess with baby and not put anything in baby's um, crib. Jacqueline has a 10 month old. Bedtime is seven, the first nap's at 10, usually sleeps two hours and second nap's at two, which used to work, but he's refused his second nap three days in a row. Why? Um, probably that first nap's too long. I would limit it to one and a half hours because that protects the second nap. Um, and the second awake time can be 10 months old, I would say like three hours-ish um, for that awake time before the second nap. Shorten the first nap, three hours awake time, second nap. Grand total of three hours daytime sleep only, and that should help you guys get through the next few months. Deuces, dolo. Currently my 19 month old co-sleeps with me and insists on being wrapped around me like an octopus. How can I get her used to sleeping not on me before trans transitioning to her own bed? Yeah, so I, if you wanna look at last week's post when I talk about going from co-sleeping to a crib, I did talk a little bit more about like setting the stage in the bed. Um, so you can have a look at that. Um, maybe we talked last week as well. But what I would do is if your little one's used to sleeping basically on you, then you're right. Getting them to go into a toddler bed could be too much. Your little one's also 19 months old though. So I would actually be thinking about the crib. Um, if you have a crib, I would set it up for sure. And I'd put her in it during the day and like make it fun and have it like have her play in it and make sure she can't climb out straight away. If you see that she's not able to climb out and she's not even thinking about climbing out, I would really highly recommend you transition her to the crib. She could get another year in there, even longer. And having your little one contained for sleep while they're not supervised because you're sleeping will give you so much peace of mind. You will sleep so much more soundly than a 19 month old who has a bed with no boundaries. So if you look at last week's post, I believe it was on Thursday, I gave specific tips for getting a baby out of co-sleeping. So if you're starting sleeping like this, then the first thing you can do is don't change anything. But as soon as she falls asleep, you're gonna just slowly get her tentacles off of you. And if you wanna go super slowly, you can just get used to her tentacles being off you and you guys sleeping next to each other and touching all night long. And you can try that for like two nights, right? Then when that becomes a little bit easier, like as soon as she falls asleep, you can get her sleeping next to you after about two nights, then I would move about one foot away from her in the bed after she falls asleep and sleep there. But the purpose of this, and it works really well, is it gets your little one used to sleeping with a little bit of space around her, not touching you, not wrapped around you. So you've gone from tentacles to sleeping next to each other for most of the night. And of course, in the middle of the night, if she gets right back on you, then let her fall asleep, feed her, whatever you do to help her fall back asleep, and then slowly unwind her. It could take a few nights to get her used to this. The second phase is once she's asleep, scooting about one foot away from her in their bed, she's gonna continue to wake throughout the night, that's okay. Get her back to sleep like you normally do. And again, once she's asleep, you're gonna scoot away from her about one foot in the bed. Then you could have another phase where you're about two feet away from her in the bed. This is actually quite a lot of progress. It might sound like, oh my gosh, like how long is this gonna take? But if you're going from a situation like this, and within like you know a handful of days, you're now sleeping at other ends of the bed, that's progress, that's great progress. Then once you get to that point, Again, I highly recommend she goes in a crib. So you could either set the crib up in your bedroom right next to your bed, or you could set it up in her bedroom and then you guys could start sleeping in there. That's kind of up to you. Um, and you can look at my post from last week specifically about babies, but that is what I would do. I would definitely make sure she can't climb out of the crib and I would be aiming for the crib. If you don't have a crib, I mean, it depends. If she's a super, if she's not a super physical active, she is a she, right? I keep saying she, yeah. If she's not a super active physical girl, if she's not especially the tallest kid in the world, I would get a crib. I would definitely, maybe a friend, you have a friend who just outgrew their crib, you could um, ask if you could borrow it for a while, but I would do the crib, it's gonna give you so much more peace of mind. Um, but that gives you some ideas, deuces, hopefully that helps, and definitely check out last week's post. Beautifully yummy, what if you're still nursing them to sleep? Yes, so in my post I did say um, good times to start uh, night weaning. So what I would do, I mean it depends, you could night wean first and foremost or stop nursing to sleep first and foremost, but for sure what you wanna do is you want to stop nursing them to sleep once you start sleep training. So in this post, it was step six. Sorry guys, I can't remember the number. Yeah, yeah, it was step six. You could do all the other steps 
and you're at the point where you're camping out in their room, they're sleeping in their bed all night. And then once you start teaching them how to fall asleep in their bed and stay there all night, you can also stop nursing them to sleep at that point. Because that is what sleep training is. It's getting your little one comfortable, falling asleep on their own and resettling themselves in the night. So you could definitely start then. Some parents think that this might be too much for their toddler. So they may want to stop feeding to sleep before they even start this whole process. So let's say you don't even do the steps yet and you're still in your bedroom, your little one's falling asleep in your bed and you're nursing them to sleep. Then you could wean off of feeding to sleep and you could comfort them in another way, holding them, um, rocking them, lying down next to them, but not feeding, um, having another caregiver, like, you know, your spouse, um, step in and do it. So you could wean off of that first. And then once they're used to falling asleep and not needing to nurse, then you could work through these steps. If you choose to not do that, then for sure, you're going to want to do it by step six when you're teaching them to fall asleep in their own bed. So it kind of just depends like how quickly do you want to move? Um, how much do you think your little one would be able to handle it? But you could do it at any, at any stage. English Lucy. Hi, English Lucy. Oh, I'm so happy I could be a help. Thank you. Man J. Toddler is 22 months old. We just bought him a Paw Patrol bed. Paw Patrol. <laughs> I've seen all the episodes like at least 73 times. And I used to get asked every other day, Mom, who's your favorite Paw Patrol? Who is it? And it could never be Sky because that was obviously my daughter's favorite. Sorry, Paw Patrol um, tangent. 22 months old, we just put him a Paw Patrol bed. He's excited about the bed. However, last two nights he goes in and out of his bed for an hour. Of course he does. He's 22 months. <sighs> I mean, why did you transition out? Was he climbing out of his crib repeatedly and it was a safety risk? If yes, cool. Go with Paw Patrol. If no, and you just did it because it's cute and he's almost two and he loves Paw Patrol, I would do my best to get him back in the crib. Maybe that means I get Paw Patrol sheets for the crib. Maybe I let him sleep with his favorite character, Rebel, Marshall, Rocky, whoever it is in the crib. I don't know. I mean, if you give me some more details at 22 to 24 months, you can, I mean, it depends on their temperament, their personality. You can get them used to, um, staying in their bed, falling asleep in the bed and not coming out, but you've got to be extremely consistent and you've got to be quite firm with them. If you want to click the link here in my bio and you can watch the video, how to keep your toddler in the toddler bed all night, watch the video that gives you an example of a sleep training method to get them. And so it just depends on, you know, you can accomplish anything and, and you didn't mess everything up. I mean, and they're almost two. So definitely watch the video, but you have to be extremely um, consistent and have quite, like good boundaries so that they understand that they can't get out of the bed a hundred times at bedtime and also during the night when you're not um, watching them. Eventually he fell asleep on the floor. So this does happen. That's okay. It's sad. Um, it does happen, but they very quickly realize after a few nights that the floor is not a comfortable place to sleep. Beautifully, Yanni. My son never slept in his crib, so is there a need to switch if we still co-sleep? Also, should I night wean before the switch? Hold on. I think you just asked that. Let me see. Yeah. Yes. Yanni was the one that said still nursing to sleep. No. If you're happy, I should say that, sorry, in the beginning. If you're happy co-sleeping and there's not like a real safety concern, like suddenly when your baby becomes mobile and is like rolling or scooting, you know, if you're sleeping in the bed, if you're not worried, waking up all night worried about them falling off the bed or rolling off the bed, there's no safety issues, especially once your little one is older, one and two years old, um, and you're happy co-sleeping, you don't have to change anything. This is meant for parents who are co-sleeping and are ready to make that transition for their toddler to go into a toddler bed. And I do get asked this a lot. So I wanted to give specific uh, tips to help, but you don't have to do this, certainly not. It's totally up to you. Um, and I don't know how old your one, your little one is beautifully Yanni, but given the guidelines that I've just given, uh, it will help you decide if you wanted to transition to go into the crib or the toddler bed. Corinne, hello. Is the chair method still affected? Yes. Chair method is definitely effective and I highly recommend it for toddlers. It's a great method because basically what the chair method is to sum it up is your little one. If you watch the video in my link here that takes you to my video, how to keep your toddler in the bed, it's a version of the chair method. So what you do is you're probably going from lying down together and then falling asleep. What you want to do on the first night is you're going to sit up in a chair at their bedside and then you're going to stay there until they fall asleep. So that's enough change for them. Yeah, if they used to be 
lying down with mommy or daddy or cuddling them until they fall asleep. Now you're gonna be sitting up. You're gonna be really close. You can hold hands, you can stroke their head, you can sing to them, but you're not lying down with them anymore and you're in a separate space. You're sitting in the chair. Um, and then slowly over the next few days, you're gonna slowly move your chair towards the door until you're weaned out of the process. That is the gist of the chair method. And I love it for toddlers because a lot of toddlers, they go through periods of separation anxiety. So staying with your little one as they learn a new way to sleep is really effective. They're comforted by your presence, but you're still encouraging independent sleep. So it's like a win-win. Um, it's not meant for all toddlers. So if your toddler gets really upset that you're there and not um, helping in the way that they're used to, you may need to pop in and out of the room. But otherwise, we usually start off with a method similar to chair method for toddlers. So yeah, Corinne, I think you could go for it. Courtney's little ones are 11 months and 24 months. It depends on your... I mean, it depends on your 24-month-old, Courtney, um, how how much they can understand. Like, how comfortable do you feel leaving them unsupervised during the day? <laughs> if you're like, what? Never. Then I probably wouldn't have them sharing a bedroom just yet. Do you know what I mean? So who would you keep with you? I'd keep the better sleeper with you. So if your 24-month-old has now been sleeping, like, through the night amazingly for quite a long time and has become a bit of a heavy sleeper, you could move them into your room. Um, because when you room share, you're likely to make more noises. You could wake each other up. So I would probably have the good sleeper in my bedroom. And if like your 11 month old just learned to sleep through the night and you just worked on it, I wouldn't want to ruin that. And so I would probably keep the 11 month old in their own bedroom. You can communicate better with the 24 month old too. So that's probably be my choice. But if it's vice versa and the 11 month old is much better sleeper then I would do the opposite. And I, I mean, you could also think of any other creative spaces in your house where one of them can sleep. Um, an office, um, a, like a walk-in closet, but you're not going to shut the door. Like any dark, quiet corner of the house where they could just sleep at night when everybody else is sleeping. Obviously, you have a video monitor. Obviously, there's good airflow. Um, but is there anywhere you could put one of them? If the baby could even be like in a pack and play just to get you through the next 6 to 12 months. And then they could share a bedroom and you'd be more comfortable with it. Courtney. <laughs> it's like a private call being Courtney. My 11 month old has a nap uh, from 9.30 to 11. She wakes up after 30 minutes to an hour, so I moved it to 10 to 11.30. She couldn't handle three hours awake at time in the morning, so then I did two hours, 45 minutes, but she only slept one hour. Courtney, that's not a problem because usually at 11 to 12 months, I recommend limiting the morning nap to one hour to protect the afternoon nap. And the afternoon nap can be up to two hours, so three hours total daytime sleep. So I would play with whatever time works well for her and gets her that one hour nap. And if she wakes up naturally, that's cool. And then the second nap should be at least an hour, but ideally like one and a half hours, maybe two. So that's okay. And we do that to protect the second nap because usually around this age, they start fighting the second nap. Maybe your little one's fighting the first nap. Um, but a lot of them fight the second nap, so we do that to protect it. So I think that's okay. Should I reduce the first nap to one hour? It's like you're reading my mind. Um, you have to see what whatever t whatever wake time was working for her. Um, you didn't tell me what time she woke up. But if she is 11 months old, then a wake time should be like two and a half and up to four hours, but not four hours in the morning. So if the first awake time of the day, I would go with two and a half to three hours and you can play. Maybe it's two hours and 45 minutes. That really works the magic. Start lower at two and a half. Try that for four or five days. Then you can go to two hours, 45, and then up to three. But I think you said she doesn't like three. So it's going to be two. I just waved at Guten Laura. Hi, Guten Laura. Um, two and a half hours or maybe two hours, 45 minutes. Manjusk. He always hated his crib and we and won't sleep in there longer than one hour. Unfortunately, due to circumstances, we could never train him. It depends on how old your little one is. So if they're old enough for the toddler bed, you could go for the toddler bed. If they're still quite young, certainly 18 months or younger, I would definitely go for the crib. And it's not uncommon for little ones to fight the crib if they've never really gotten used to sleeping there. They don't inherently hate the crib. They just are like, what are these changes you're asking me to make? Why are you not in this crib with me? And I don't like it. I'm angry. That's why I'm crying. That's why I'm upset. So that's where step six of today's post would come in. And you would have to know a step-by-step -step plan of how you're going to get them to accept going into the crib or the toddler bed, falling asleep there and staying asleep there all night. So if you have a toddler, like a two-year-old and older, you can check out today's post and the video here in my Instagram um, link in my bio. But if you have a baby, then go back to last week's post. I believe it was Thursday. And I give you specific tips to help your baby accept 
the crib from a co-sleeping situation. I hope that helps. And I never know how to pronounce your name. Tex Ribeiro. <laughs> Night 10 of the chair method. Planning on leaving the room. Leave the chair outside the room with the door open. Close the door. I'm not sure because the door open will, will mean a completely dark room. So we get this question a lot. So when you get to the point of the chair method where it's like, okay, now you need to like sit in the doorway. Um, especially now that we, most of us are having daylight savings, it's probably still bright outside when your little one's going to bed. And all I do is preach about a blacked out bedroom. And now I'm like, leave the door open and sit in the doorway. So if that doesn't work because suddenly your baby's bedroom is gonna become too bright, then don't do that. I would go from like sitting at the door with the door closed and then I would go to like a, um, like a checking in and out method, like a Ferber method. I would then go to popping in and out of the room. Or you could sit, you could keep their bedroom door closed if it's always been closed and you could sit right outside and give verbal reassurance. But don't start letting light in the bedroom because that will be too distracting for them. Also leave right away or stay near the crib for a lullaby, like one minute or two. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's bedtime, a minute or two of lullaby is fine. I mean, if you see them like totally drifting off to sleep, I wouldn't do it because they're, you're helping them fall asleep. But if they're wide awake and rolling around and you're singing twinkle, twinkle once or twice, I think it's fine. Kingu Kinga, nine month old is sleeping through the night. Awesome, 12 hours. First nap is at an hour 15, goes down fine, but second nap is fighting so bad. What can I do? Um, at nine months old, a wake time should be about two and a half, three, three and a half. So maybe you need to adjust those awake times. It's a pretty short awake time in the morning. So I don't know the, any other details. Maybe he goes down easily. I mean, my guess is that the nap would be quite short. Um, but I would try to stretch that first awake time for sure. Um, if it's one hour 15 mat now, I'd do like one hour 45 for several days. And I would do like two hours for one or two days. And I would try to work up to between two and two and two and a half to between two and two and a half hours in the morning. And then try to get like three before the second nap and then three and a half before bedtime. Danielle Tippins, my seven and a half and thought is started to wake every two hours at night. How do I help him sleep longer? He's been napping two to three times a day, depending on how long he naps. So check out my seven month old sleep guide because it walks you through specifics of this age. He could be ready for the three to two nap transition. So check out that guide on my website as well. You can just go to babysleepmidsimple.com and do a search and you can do three to two nap transition and also seven month old. There can sometimes be a regression at this age, which is not really often talked about, but I've seen it enough that I was like, we need to write an article about this. So check out those two guides. It's could be that he just wants to drop that third nap and he's ready for more consolidated daytime sleep and longer awake times. Um, but we don't really want to do that until night sleep gets a bit more sorted out. So check out my seven month old sleep guide as well. It's probably what it is. If he was sleeping through the night before, like beautifully and independently, it's probably that he wants to drop the last nap. Jay Cranston, my four month old used to sleep through the night. Now he wakes up every hour for the last three weeks. I'm sorry to hear that. This is the form of the regression. The good news, the silver lining is that it's a byproduct of development. I know, I know, I know. A lot of young babies sleep great. They sleep deep, long periods, but around the fourth month, their brain goes through a huge development and their sleep cycles become more adult-like and they're more easily rousable. And this becomes the perfect age to teach them to settle themselves to sleep. Because if you don't, there's a chance that every time they stir during the night, they're gonna need your help, which is what is happening. The great news for UJ Cranston is it's been happening for three weeks and I only give regressions two weeks. That's all I give them. And at the two week mark from everything going out the window, I say you're fine to begin sleep training. The regression has passed and now what's happening is mostly due from habit. So right now, Jake Cranston, go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, do a search for the four month regression. It's gonna tell you what's going on and give you tips to get your four month old sleeping well. And then I have another guide called why is my four month old not sleeping? And that has a little, the they're very, very, very similar, but read them both because, and if you start doing all the tips from these guides, um, every day, I guarantee you'll see improvements in your four month old sleep really, really quickly. Um, I like to begin official sleep training at five months old to be sure we're through this phase. But if you know that it's been happening for three weeks, I mean, probably your little one's turning five months soon, then you could also begin sleep training like a week early. It's totally fine. Check out those two guides. They're gonna give you actionable tips that are actually gonna help your little one start sleeping longer stretches. It's coming. <laughs> the help is on the way, I promise you. You've suffered long enough. I can't guarantee like sleeping through the night 12 hours, by the way, uh, but I can guarantee long, long stretches of night sleep. Good luck. 
Jess, 777, my room is on another floor as a four month old. Hubby is a light sleeper. So I'm sleeping in the baby's room in a twin bed for night feeds. When does the baby really get attached to you in there when they're the most aware? This is a really good question. Um, it's, it's a bit of a tricky one. So it kind of, like my husband's really light sleeper so I totally get your situation. Here's what I'm thinking. Usually by five to six months, your little one gets used to you being in the room. So if you wanted to transition out of there sooner rather than later because you'd like to get back to your bedroom, you could, but maybe they're not ready to be fully night weaned. And so then they could still cry out for you in the night, obviously, and need you. And if that wakes up your husband and that starts, it's all problems, you may want to hang out in your baby's bedroom until they're night weaned. Um, when they can be night weaned depends on your little one. So the first thing I would do is get in touch with your baby's doctor and say, when can my little one sleep through the night without needing to feed? So we're talking 10, 11, or 12 hours straight. Get your doctor's opinion who knows your baby individually and knows their growth and their awakening. And if your doctor says six months, you know, then you know, okay, six months, I'm going to move out of the room. Or if your doctor says now, I mean, four month old, eh, you could try. Probably five to six months is like earliest that I really advocate for night weaning, but it depends on, on your situation. Um, I would do that because again, if you're going to go back to your bedroom and wait for your baby to wake you up, it's probably going to wake up your husband and then maybe he came back to get back to sleep for hours. And so that could be, it's all a new can of worms, but I wouldn't be in fear. Like oh, my baby's going to get so attached to me. I'm in this weird conundrum. It's okay. Like at any age for your, it's probably easier to sleep train your baby than it is to sleep train your husband. I've been sleep training my husband for like 10 years. He's like, more of an inspiration for my work than my daughter because <laughs> he's a terribly light sleeper. He needs really specific circumstances to sleep and I'm still working on him. Like if I don't watch him, he'll stay up till two in the morning. He'll want to take a long nap every day. He's like a naughty toddler. Um, anyway, so what I would say for you, Jess, is hang out, get your doctor's opinion. Let's say your doctor says six months, then I wouldn't feel any guilt for continuing to room share until six months. And when you know you're in the clear to night wean, then I would night wean and sleep train. Um, and then you can move back to your bedroom because you know that the majority of the nights your baby's going to be sleeping through the night. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Get your doctor's permission and an idea of when it can happen. And then that can kind of be your goal. But even if your doctor says, oh, your little one's been slow to gain weight and I really don't recommend it until like eight months, just know that's okay. At any age, we can night wean, we can sleep train and we can get you out of the room. All right. I hope that was coherent. Danielle Tippins, my son also has not slept more than three hours total nap time. Um, okay, sorry, I, I think I missed your first question. Courtney, so two hours for the second nap is acceptable. Yes, total of three hours daytime sleep. Felicia, how much daytime sleep is needed for a six-month-old on two naps? Thank you, you're awesome. You're awesome, Felicia, thank you. A six-month-old needs a grand total of three hours uh, sleep. So ideally an hour and a half and an hour and a half. If your little one wants to take a two-hour nap and then have a one-hour nap, as long as their moods are pretty stable, they're not having huge meltdowns, that's fine too. Um, but I wouldn't go more than three hours total daytime sleep to protect their night sleep. Oh, I'm sorry, it's been rough for you. Yes, fingers crossed it does get better soon. Ah, here's Danielle. I'm generally concerned with nap time versus nighttime sleep and how they affect each other. If he's overtired, do I put him to bed an hour earlier or just 30 minutes? But then you said, hold on, where was your other question? My son also has not slept more than three hours total nap time. So yeah, I'm not sure of the age, um, but definitely like for a baby that is six months and older all the way through to a two-year-old, um, they can get up to three hours total daytime sleep and a well-rested baby during the day sleeps better at night and vice versa. So don't be afraid of letting your baby nap as much as they need, like up to three hours. So if your little one's in that age group, Danielle, which I assume they are. Yes. So here's the general rule. I'm just going to say your little one's like 10 months and they need two to three total hours of daytime sleep. So if for some reason they're finished napping for the day and they got like right at the two hour mark or less total daytime sleep, I would definitely move bedtime earlier because if not, and they're up for a really long stretch and they're overtired because they didn't nap enough, more than likely it will worsen night sleep. They may have trouble falling asleep at bedtime. Not that big of a deal. They may start wake more often during a the night. They may wake early in the morning. Then suddenly, what are you going to do for naps tomorrow if they're up at 530 in the morning and they usually get up at 645 and it can start this cycle. So I would definitely move bedtime earlier. Bedtime is the easiest place to add in lost hours of sleep. 
So if your bedtime was normally seven, you're like, oh my God, I'm not putting my kid down to bed at like 6.15. They're going to wake up at four in the morning. They won't wake up at the four in the morning. And even if they did, 4 a.m. is a night waking. So we would treat it as an, an, a night waking. Any waking before 6 a.m. should be treated as a night waking. And over and over and over throughout the years, I promise you, I've advised parents, move bedtime earlier. From just 7 to 6.30 can make a difference. Or from 8 to 7.15 can make a huge difference with the quality of nighttime sleep. So we definitely move bedtime earlier if that were the case. Now, if they normally sleep three total hours during the day and they only sleep two and a half, I'd probably try to keep up with their normal bedtime. Um, whether you move bedtime 30 minutes earlier or an hour earlier really depends on their recommended awake times for their age. So if you have a 10 month old, really awake time should be like two and a half to three and a half hours. Sometimes the last awake time of the day can be four hours. But if you're looking at an awake time of like five hours or more, then I would move bedtime earlier to fit in the recommended awake time range. Okay, I hope that made sense. Kingu Kinga, please save this so I can write it down <laughs> what you just said. I will. Sorry, let me silence that. Let me shut that. I will. I've been able to save all of uh, the most recent Instagram lives and put them on my YouTube channel. So as long as they have that little arrow after the call ends, I promise I'll save this video for you. I'm sorry if I spoke too quickly. Jay Cranston, he self soothes to sleep, just not in the middle of the night. Thank you. You're welcome. Jet, she goes to sleep independently, but not sure if they hit the four month regression. Yeah, well, if, you, if your little one's going to sleep independently, that's amazing. You then. There's other things you probably could tweak, like awake times during the day, bedtime, waiting a little bit longer when you hear him at the night, at night, not running to him. So have a look at those two guides and make sure you're following everything. I mean, if it's been three weeks, I'm inclined to say the regression is over. If it had only been a few days, I would say you might just have to ride this out. He's just at a period of restlessness. His body and his brain are going through so much. But if it's been three weeks, you're definitely um, able to kind of tighten up your sleep routines and get him falling back asleep on his own for each night waking. Maybe you're helping them a little bit in the night because you're so tired and it's harder than at bedtime. So you're free to start whatever sleep training method you use to get him falling asleep at bedtime independently. Go ahead and use that for night wakings too. <laughs> Jess, yeah, I won't night wean. Hubby can suffer. Ha ha ha, evil laugh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you guys a really funny story that I tell my girlfriends. So we brought my son, he's, oh, he's turning six months this week. We brought him home from the hospital, right? He's like three days old. <laughs> and when we had our daughter, he, my husband ended up sleeping in another room for a while while we were doing the night feeding thing. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm breastfeeding. You just get in the way. So when we brought our son home six months ago, it was like, we did the bedtime routine, you know, and we were getting ready to go to bed. My husband like got in the bed. I was like, okay, he's going to try to room share with us that's cool my baby woke up at 11 o'clock at night with his first night feed and my husband stormed out and said i can't live like this <laughs> one night feed that was it and then he went to sleep in another room so jess i totally feel you <laughs> i highly recommend like industrial strength earplugs my husband's been using them for years now and they really really help because bless him he is the lightest sleeper and that is torturous for him. I'm a really heavy sleeper, so I can room share. Like it is no problem. I can room share with him, with the baby, it doesn't matter, but my husband can't. So he has like industrial earplugs. So I understand when families have to make temporary switches and sleeping arrangements, right? Anyway, that's really funny that you said that because I feel you. Hugs and kisses. My six and a half month old sleeps independently for naps. That's awesome. Two naps, three hours total. Yes. And nighttime. Recently, she's been between midnight to 2 a.m. crying hysterically and won't go back to sleep. Any suggestions? Hmm. Um, I mean, there's two things. There can be a regression at six months. I don't love throwing everything to a regression, but there can be a regression at six months. Check out my six-month-old sleep guide for sure. The only thing is I'm wondering about her awake time. So she's, she's six months and she's down to two naps which can be normal, but a lot of little ones aren't ready for two naps until they're a little bit older, seven, eight, nine months. So maybe if her awake times are a little bit too long and she's getting a little bit stretched, even though she's sleeping beautifully and you've done amazingly, it's not your fault. But sometimes if the awake times are a little bit too long, like if they're three hours for all of them or certainly more than three hours, that could just be a little bit too much for her developmentally. So I'd have a look at those awake times. Maybe if you could just shorten them a little bit, move bedtime a little bit earlier just to kind of fit into that two to three hour range, like two, two and a half, three. Um, that might be able to help. But definitely check out my six-month-old guide because it also talks about a potential six-month regression. Hopefully it's not that. 
I mean, being awake for two hours in the night, it could just be developmental. I mean, I hopefully it's a really short phase, but have a look at that guide for sure. Um, Casey, hi, I have a 10 month old that still wakes every four hours to eat. How do we try and stop that? Two guides for you, Casey. I have a 10 month old sleep training guide. So it's gonna walk you through all the steps to get your 10 month old falling asleep on their own and sleeping through the night because the majority of 10 month olds can sleep all night long without needing to feed. And also if you want more details on specifically night weaning, I have a weaning night feedings guide. So if you just go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com in the search, you can do 10 month old and you can do weaning night feedings and you can see both of those guides. And together those will give you a clear plan of how to get your 10 month old sleeping better. At this age, we can be confident that your little one can learn to sleep independently and sleep great at night. So if you're motivated, then I say go for it. Ciao, Bella. Um, hi, my four-year-old daughter has co-slept since birth. We've hyped up her room <laughs> to her liking. We've started having her sleep in her room, but she always ends up in our room at midnight. So if you, I have two guides for you. One on my website um, is called How to Stop Your Toddler from Repeatedly Getting Out of Bed at Night. It's like a really big, long, wordy title. But that one is probably helpful because it's more about your little one coming out of their bed and into your bed at night. Um, but if you need like a specific step-by-step -step strategy, like how am I going to do this? If you go to the link here in my bio on Instagram, you'll see how to keep your toddler in their bed. It's the same principle. Those two guides are going to show you exactly what to do. Um, you've hyped up her room. She's falling asleep in it, which is amazing. But now you need to have the conversation. I mean, she's four. So you need to really have the conversation. Uh, mommy really expects you to sleep in your bed all night. Let's, you know, find out why. Is she scared in the night? She's four years old now. If she says that she's scared, then you can talk about a nightlight. Um, at four years old, it's fine to have a nightlight in your little one's room when they tell you that they're having, you know, nighttime fears. Um, you could also tell her, okay, if you wake up and you want me, you need to call out to me. Don't come into my bed, but call out to me. And you have to actually start walking her back to her bed if she comes out or you go to her and you reassure, give her a quick kiss, a quick hug and let her know she's okay. Maybe the first night you stay with her until she falls asleep. Maybe the second night you stay until she's almost asleep. The third night you say, I'm just going to go use the bathroom. I'll be back in a few minutes. And usually at that hour, if they know you're coming back, they'll fall asleep. And then when you quietly peek in the door, they're asleep. Great. Keep doing that for a few nights. And then they usually will start sleeping through even at four years old. And this is not meant to scare you, but if you have like a four year old independent sleeper, like my daughter has been an independent sleeper for ages, but even like, you know, there's times when she was three and when she was four, if we fell into the habit of mommy, stay with me while I fall asleep at bedtime. And I'd say, oh, okay, you know, why not? And I'd stay in her room. She would wake up those nights. But if I didn't, like, and I would notice it because I'm obsessed with sleep and I would notice it. And so then I would start at bedtime to say, I'm, you know, I'm going to pop out of the room. If I was just out of the room for her to fall asleep at bedtime, then she would sleep through. Um, so you could see if maybe that pertains to your case as well, but talk to her, find out what's going on and then come up with a creative way to help her. So if she's just like, I just want to be in your bed. Well, then you have to say, listen, you know, mommy and daddy, I guess or mommy, whoever is in bed, there's really not room, but come get me in the night and I'll come and walk you back to your bed um, or call out to me and I will come to you. So let her know like you're gonna stay in your bed. These are my expectations of you in a very loving way, but also in a firm way. And then come up with a solution within a few days at four years old, if you really communicate with them, within a few days, they can go to sleeping through the night completely on their own. Um, but you have to stick with it, obviously. But check out those two guides, Ciao Bella. You're welcome, Danielle. Um, Dustin, hi, Jill. Just jumped on to ask a question. Going to watch at nap time. Okay. May for maps. Is your survival kit for a four-month-old baby boy? It definitely is. Uh, click the link in my bio to get the exhausted mom survival kit. Okay, Dustin. We don't co-sleep, but my 21-month-old falls asleep on one of us, sometimes sleeps through, sometimes wakes once. We want to get her into a bed so we can camp out beside her. Can we do this at 21 months? You can definitely do this at 21 months. You can do it at any, any age. It's never too late, never too crazy of a situation. So you don't co-sleep, but she falls asleep on top of you. We want to get her into a bed. So we can, okay, so what I, now I think I understand what you're saying. So then just move into her bed in her bedroom, let her fall asleep on you for one or two nights there. So it's like you changed her bedroom, you changed her bed, but you're still the consistent thing. So she shouldn't fight it. Just be like, oh, we're gonna begin your bed. Your bed's great, your bed's wonderful, hype it up. Let her fall asleep on you for about two nights, maybe three in her new bed. And then if you want a super gradual method, then at 
after night two or three, then you sit up in the bed. So you sit up and she lays down and say, no, I'm going to stay here for you to fall asleep. And she's like, no, 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 you have to lay down. I have to lay down on you. I would be quite firm. I'd say, no, I'm going to stay for you to fall asleep. And if, but if you keep fighting me, then I'm going to have to pop out of the room for a minute and come back when you can quiet down. So you do have to establish some new rules. You do have to be, you have to set boundaries and you have to stick to them. So I would do that for about two or three nights to where your little one's now comfortable with you sitting up in the bed. It's a little bit of a separation, right? And they're falling asleep. Then I would sit in a chair at the bedside, same thing. If they suddenly start to fight it, say, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm going to stay here for you until you fall asleep. But if you start running around the room, start climbing on me, start screaming or whatever, I'm going to have to leave until you can be quiet. So I would do that and then slowly wean your chair towards the door. And you do the exact same thing during the night. Whatever you did at bedtime, you also do during the night. So check out, also if you click the link in my bio, uh, the video, how to get your toddler sleeping in their bed, check that out. Um, and then just implement those extra tips I just gave in the beginning about first switching to their bed. You wanna take your bed off the menu and your bedroom off the menu, basically. So all of their sleep is now gonna happen in their bedroom. How quickly you progress to them getting used to falling asleep in their toddler bed and staying there is up to you, it's up to your little one's temperament, um, but even in the future, once your little one's sleeping great in their room, let's say they get sick and you really want to sleep near them, I would avoid pulling them into your bed and your bedroom. I would actually take your bedroom off the menu long term and instead you go to camping out in their bedroom. All the sleep now happens in their bedroom. And I promise you over time, they will actually forget that your bed and your bedroom is even an option. Okay, I hope that helps. Hugs and kisses. Thanks, Jilly. If she wakes at 6.45, what should be the awake time for a six and a half month old? Um, awake time should be about two, two and a half, and three. So if your little one wakes at 6.45, I'd expect the nap time, the first nap time to be about 8.45. Trey Cinco. Thanks again, baby girls. become such a great sleeper. We are forever thankful. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Keep telling me. <laughs> You're so sweet for tuning in and letting me know, and I'm just... So, so, so happy for you. Thank you so much. Ciao, Bella. Thank you. We have a five-month-old in our room. And I know, okay. And I know my four-year-old isn't sleeping good when, of course, the baby wakes up. She insists there are ghosts under her bed. I will look up your guides. So I am of the opinion, I don't like ghost spray and monster spray. Like some people will say, oh, we'll just put a little bottle spray bottle at the bedside and they can squirt the ghost away. I don't like that because it's like kind of saying it reinforces the belief that there might be ghosts. But if that, if that works for your little one, you can do it. Like with my daughter, if she ever said like that, I would say, well, ghosts aren't real. And I would just reassure you, I promise you, I promise you that ghosts aren't real. I promise you there are no monsters. What did she ask me about recently? Dragons? Dragons, I think. Oh, she called me out. She's like, you know, dragons, they're real. I said, no, honey, dragons are not real. I promise you there's no dragons in our new neighborhood because we moved last summer. She goes, what about a Komodo dragon I saw at the zoo? <laughs> Genius. Um, I said, well, they were little and cute. So if you found one in your bedroom, that wouldn't be bad. Um, so I'm of the opinion that you should not reinforce something like monsters or ghosts. So I don't do the monster spray and all that. I try to use like reason and logic when when possible. Um, so what I would do for you, child Bella, is I would explain there's no ghost, but what you could do at bedtime is like, let's look under your bed together and you could shine a flashlight. You see everything safe, open up the closet. There's nothing in here. And certainly ask, would you like me to leave a light on in your room? Like, would that make you feel safe? Yes. And just know if you ever call out for me, then I will come to you. Um, but yeah, if you have a five month old in the room, they're gonna probably end up waking each other up. So I would really work on making that transition. Emily Brent, my four and a half month old used to be really good at sleeping and only waking once or sleeping through, but now he wakes up three to four times and wants to feed, but falls asleep feeding, so I don't think he gets a full feed. What more than likely is happening, Emily, is that your little one's gone through the big development that happens at four months old, and babies this age become more easy to rouse. As they go between sleep cycles, they're now, if we help our little one fall asleep, like probably you feed your baby to sleep at bedtime. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is the way that they fall asleep at bedtime is they need to, is the way that they need to fall back asleep when they wake up at, at night. Sorry, I'm tongue tied. Is the way they need to fall back to sleep when they wake during the night or even when they stir. So, so I know your young baby used to be able to connect sleep cycles and sleep deeply, and it sucks. You thought like I got a great sleeper. Now they're four months old, five months old, or six, and they're suddenly waking up a lot more, and they're needing your help to fall back asleep. So what I would check out, your little one's four and a half months old, which is good because at five months old or 20 weeks adjusted age, 20 weeks from your baby's due date, you are free to teach them to sleep independently. 
At this point, we know they've been through this four month development that you're going through right now, and they now have the ability to learn to settle themselves to sleep. So please check out my four month old sleep regression guide on my website and my guide called why is my four month old not sleeping? They will give you specific tips for this age to help your four month old sleep improve. And in one or two weeks when they turn five months old, you're free to start putting them to sleep independently and encouraging them to resettle themselves during the night. You may need to hold them to one night feed or if you're confident they can sleep through, you can go for that as well. But check out those two guides. Oh my gosh, I think we're going to actually get to all the questions today. Yay! Um, Carolina, hi, Jilly. Should the last wake time of the day be longer than earlier in the day? Typically, yes, but there are some little ones where it's not the case. I have a five-month-old who is awake approximately two hours between naps, but in the evening he still seems energetic after two hours. Yeah, for sure. So in this case, for a five-month-old, try to have bedtime at two and a half hours awake time. Or if your little one's a pretty good sleeper, like is getting like some good kind of like solid naps, like three hours, three to four hours total daytime sleep, sleeps pretty well at night. So they're getting like 12, like 14 to 16 total hours of sleep every day. Um, and is quite a good sleeper. Then that elastic wake time of the day can be two and a half, maybe even three hours. So my little guy is turning six months, but I've noticed for some awake times, he's cool with three hours, especially the bedtime one. So it kind of depends on your little one, but I would think that a two hour awake time before bedtime for a five month old could be a little bit short. So stretch it to two and a half hours and see how they do. And just know if they're a pretty good sleeper overall, you could even stretch it a little bit more. I hope that helps. Ah, this is great. I'm so happy when I actually get to all your questions because I feel bad leaving some of you guys hanging. All right, well, thank you guys for showing up. Um, I hope that you guys are well. I hope you're healthy. You and your loved ones are safe. I love all those hearts. Thank you guys. Um, all right. I'm going to do more live Q&As. Today's Monday. I have my Monday brain on. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. We're going to have two more. Stay tuned. If you are interested in finding out how to wean your little one off the pacifier, we're going to talk about this week. And then I don't actually know what else we're going to talk about this week, to be honest with you. So feel free to give me some ideas. Um, maybe I'll put a little, I'll do an Instagram story when we hang up and I'll say, what do you want to know more about? Um, and we can talk about that. All right, guys, I hope you have a good Monday, that you guys are all well and healthy and happy. Hopefully you can get outside and get some fresh air of some sort. Um, and I will see you guys in two days. I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care.